The introduction of the modern public cloud in the mid-2000s permanently changed the way we think about IT. At the heart of it, the cloud operating model attacked one of the biggest problems in enterprise infrastructure, human labor costs. More than half of IT budgets were spent on people and much of that effort added little or no differentiable value to the business. The automation of provisioning, management, recovery, optimization, and decommissioning infrastructure resources has gone mainstream as organizations demand a cloud-like model across all their application infrastructure, irrespective of its physical location. This has not only cut cost, but it's also improved quality and reduced human error. Hello everyone, my name is Dave Vellante and welcome to Simplifying Hybrid Cloud, made possible by Cisco. Today, we're going to explore hybrid cloud as an operating model for organizations. Now the definition of cloud is expanding. Cloud is no longer an abstract set of remote services, you know, somewhere out in the clouds. No, it's an operating model that spans public cloud, on-premises infrastructure, and it's also moving to edge locations. This trend is happening at massive scale, while at the same time, preserving granular control of resources. It's an entirely new game where IT managers must think differently to deal with this complexity. And the environment is constantly changing. The growth and diversity of applications continues. And now we're living in a world where the workforce is remote. Hybrid work is now a permanent state and will be the dominant model. In fact, a recent survey of CIOs by Enterprise Technology Research, ETR, indicates that organizations expect 36% of their workers will be operating in a hybrid mode, splitting time between remote work and in-office environments. This puts added pressure on the application infrastructure required to support these workers. The underlying technology must be more dynamic and adaptable to accommodate constant change. So the challenge for IT managers is ensuring that modern applications can be run with a cloud-like experience that spans on-prem, public cloud, and edge locations. This is the future of IT. Now today we have three segments where we're going to dig into these issues and trends surrounding hybrid cloud. First up is Didi Dasgupta, who will set the stage and share with us how Cisco is approaching this challenge. Next, we're going to hear from Manish Agarwal and Darren Williams, who will help us unpack Hyperflex, which is Cisco's hyperconverged infrastructure offering. And finally, our third segment will drill into unified compute. More than a decade ago, Cisco pioneered the concept of bringing together compute with networking in a single offering. Cisco frankly changed the legacy server market with UCS, Unified Compute System. The X series is Cisco's next generation architecture for the coming decade and we'll explore how it fits into the world of hybrid cloud and its role in simplifying the complexity that we just discussed. So thanks for being here. Let's go. Okay, let's start things off. Didi Dasgupta is back on theCUBE to talk about how we're going to simplify hybrid cloud complexity. Didi, welcome, good to see you again. Hey Dave, thanks for having me, good to see you again. Yeah, our pleasure here. Uh, look, let's start with big picture. Talk about the trends you're seeing from your customers. Well, I think first off, every customer these days is a public cloud customer. They do have their on-premise data centers, but um, every customer is looking to move workloads, new services, cloud native services from the public cloud. I think that's that's one of the big things that we're seeing. Um, while that is happening, we're also seeing a pretty dramatic evolution of the application landscape itself. You, you've got you know, bare metal applications, you always had virtualized applications, um, and then most modern applications are um, are containerized and you know, managed by Kubernetes. So I think we're seeing a big change in uh, uh, in the application landscape as well. And probably, you know, triggered by the first two things that I mentioned, the execution venue of the applications and then the applications themselves, it's triggering a change in the IT organizations, in the development organizations, and sort of not only how they work within their organizations, but how they work across um, all of these different organizations. So I think 
those are some of the big things that uh, that I hear about when I talk to customers. Well, so it's interesting. I, I often say Cisco kind of changed the game in in server and compute when it when it developed the original UCS. And you remember there were organizational considerations back then, bringing together the, 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 the server team and the networking team, and of course the storage team was involved. And now you mentioned Kubernetes. That is a total game changer with regard to whole the application development process. So you have to think about a new strategy in that regard. So how have you evolved your strategy? What is your strategy to help customers simplify, accelerate their hybrid cloud journey in that context? No, I think you're right, Dave. Um, back to the origins of UCS. I mean, we, you know, why did a networking company build a, a server? Well, we just enabled it with the best networking technology, so it would do compute better. And now we're doing something similar on the software. Actually, the managing software for our uh, hyperconvergence, for our, you know, rack servers, for our blade servers. And you know, we've been on this journey for about four years. Um, the software is called Intersight. And you know, we started out with Intersight being just the element manager, the management software for Cisco's compute and hyperconverged devices. Um, but then we've evolved it over the last few years because we believe that a customer shouldn't have to manage a separate piece of software to manage the hardware, the underlying hardware, and then a separate tool to connect it to a public cloud. And then a third tool to do optimization, workload optimization or performance optimization or cost optimization. Uh, a fourth tool to now manage, you know, Kubernetes and, and like not just in one, one cluster, one cloud, but multi-cluster, multi-cloud. They should not have to have a fifth tool that does, does go, goes into observability. Anyway, I can go on and on, but you get the idea. We wanted to bring everything onto that same platform that manage their infrastructure, but it's also the platform that enables the simplicity of hybrid cloud operations automation. It's the same platform on which you can use to manage the, the Kubernetes infrastructure, uh, Kubernetes clusters, I mean, whether it's on-prem or in a cloud. So overall, that's the strategy. Bring it to a single platform, and, and, and a platform is a loaded word, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit uh, you know, in, this, in this conversation, but, that's the overall strategy, simplify. Well, you know, you brought a platform. I, I, I like to say platform beats products, but you know, there was a day, and you could still point to some examples today in the IT industry where, hey, another tool, we can monetize that. And another one to solve a different problem, we can monetize that. Uh, and, and, and so tell me more about how Intersight came about. You obviously sat back, you saw what your customers were going through. You said, we can do better. So tell us the story there. Yeah, absolutely. So, look, it started with, um, you know, three or four guys in, getting in a, in a room and saying, look, we've had this, you know, management software, UCS manager, UCS director. I mean, these are just the Cisco's management, you know, uh, for our softwares, for our own platform. And every company has their, their own flavor. We said, we, we took on this bold goal of like, we're not, when we rewrite this or we improve on this, we're not going to just write another piece of software. We're going to create a cloud service. Or we're going to create a SaaS offering because the same, in, the infrastructure built by us, whether it's on networking or compute or the cyber cloud software, how do our customers use it? Well, they use it to write and run their applications, their SaaS services. Every customer, every customer, every company today is a software company. They live and die by how their applications work or don't. And so we were like, we want to eat our own dog food here, right? We want to deliver this as a SaaS offering. And so that's how it started. I've been on this journey for about four years, tens of thousands of customers. Um, but it, it was a pretty, big, bold ambition because, you know, um, the big change with SaaS is, is your, uh, as you're familiar, Dave, is the job of now managing this, this piece of software is not on the customer, it's on the vendor, right? This can never go down. We have a release every Thursday, new capabilities, and we've learned so much along the way, whether it's around scalability, reliability, um, working with the our own company's security organizations on what can or cannot be in a SaaS service. Um, so again, it's, it's been a wonderful journey, but uh, I wanted to point out the, 
we are in some ways eating our own dog food because we built a SaaS application that helps other companies deliver their SaaS applications. You know, Cisco, I look at Cisco's business model and I compare, of course, compare it to other companies in the infrastructure business. And you're obviously a very profitable company, you're a large company, you're growing faster than, than, than most of the traditional competitors. And so that means that you have more to invest. You, 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 can, you can afford things like do, you know, stock buybacks and you can invest in R&D. You don't have to make those hard trade-offs that a lot of your competitors have to make. So- You gotta have a with my boss on the whole investment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Well, you, you, never enough, right? Never enough. But, but, but in speaking of, uh, of R&D and innovations that, that you're intro introducing, I'm specifically interested in how are you dealing with innovations to help simplify hybrid cloud, I, I, the operations there, improve flexibility, and, and things around cloud native initiatives as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, look, I think one of the fundamentals where we're kind of philosophically different from a lot of options that I see in the industry is we don't need to build everything ourselves. We don't. I just need to create a damn good platform with really good platform services, whether it's, you know, around um, searchability, whether it's around logging, whether it's around you know, access control, multi-tenants. I need to create a really good platform and make it open. I do not need to go on a shopping spree to buy 17 and a half companies and then figure out how to stitch it all together because it's it's almost impossible. And so if it's impossible for, for us as a vendor, it's, it's three times more difficult for the customer who then has to consume it. So that was the philosophical difference in how we went about building inner sites. So we've created a, a hardened platform that's that's always on. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you then the magic starts happening. Then you get partners, whether it is um, you know, infrastructure partners like uh, you know, some of our storage partners like a NetApp or Pure or you know, others who want their conversion infrastructures also to be managed, or there are other SaaS offerings and and, and software vendors. Um, who have now become partners? Like we did not, we did not write Terraform, you know, but we partnered with Hashi, and now, uh, you know, Terraform services is available on the Intersight platform. We did not write all the algorithms for workload optimization between a public cloud and, and on-prem. We partnered with a company called Turbonomics, and so that's now an offering on the Intersight platform. So that's where we're philosophically different in sort of. Uh, you know, uh, how we have gone about this. And uh, it actually dovetail, dovetails well into some of the new things that I want to talk about today that we're, that we're announcing on the Intersight platform, where we're actually announcing the ability to attach and, and be able to manage Kubernetes clusters, which are not on-prem. They're actually on AWS, on Azure, uh, soon coming on, uh, on, GC, on, uh, on GKE as well. So it really doesn't matter, we're not, telling a customer that if you're comfortable building your applications and running Kubernetes clusters on, you know, in, in AWS or Azure, stay there. But in terms of monitoring, managing it, you can use Intersight. Since you're using it on-prem, you can use that same piece of software to manage Kubernetes clusters uh, in a public cloud or even manage VMs in, in an in a EC2 instance. So. Yeah, so the fact that you could, you mentioned storage pure NetApp, so Intersight can manage that infrastructure. I remember the Hashi deal and it, it caught my attention. I and mean, of course, a lot of companies want to partner with Cisco because you've got such a strong ecosystem, but I thought that was an interesting move. Turbonomic, you mentioned, and now you're saying uh, Kubernetes in the public cloud. So a lot different than it was 10 years ago. Um, so my last question is, how do you see this hybrid cloud evolving? I mean, you had private cloud and you had public cloud and it was kind of a tug of war there. We see these, these, these two worlds coming together. How will that evolve over the next few years? Well, I think it's, it's the evolution of the model and I, I really look at kind of cloud you know, 2.0 or 3.0, depending on you know, how you're keeping count. But I think one thing has become very clear again, we, We've been eating our own dog food. I mean, Intersight is a hybrid cloud SaaS application. So we've learned some of these lessons ourselves. One thing is for sure that customers are looking for a consistent model, whether it's on the edge, on the colo, public cloud, on-prem, no data center, doesn't matter. They're looking for a consistent model for operations, for governance, for upgrades, for reliability. They're looking for a consistent operating model. 
What Mike is about tells me is I think there's going to be the rise of more custom clouds. It's still going to be hybrid. So applications will want to reside wherever it makes most sense for them, which is closest to data, because moving data is it's the most expensive thing. So it's going to be co-located with the data. If it's on the edge, it's going to be on the edge. Colo, public cloud, doesn't matter. But um, you're basically going to see more custom clouds, more industry-specific clouds, You know, whether it's for finance or transportation or retail, industry-specific. I think sovereignty is going to play a huge role. Uh, you know, today, if you look at the cloud providers, it's a handful of you know American and Chinese companies. That's that leaves the rest of the world out when it comes to making you know good digital citizens of, of their their people. And you know, whether it's data latency, data gravity, data sovereignty, I think that's going to play a huge role. Sovereignty is going to play a huge role. Um, and then distributor clouds, also called edge, um, is is going to be the next frontier. And so. That's where we are trying to line up our strategy. And if I had to sum it up in one sentence, it's really your cloud, your way. Every customer is on a different journey. They will have their choice of like workloads, data, um, you know, uh, uptime, reliability concerns. That's really what um, what we are trying to enable for our customers. You know, I think I, I agree with you on that custom clouds. And I think what you're seeing is, you said every company is a software company. Every company is also becoming a cloud company. They're building their own abstraction layers. They're connecting their on-prem to their to their public cloud. They're doing that. They're they're doing that across clouds, and they're looking for companies like Cisco to to do the hard work <laughs> and give me an infrastructure layer that I can build value on top of. Because I'm going to take my financial services business to my cloud model or my healthcare business. I don't want to mess around with infra. I'm not going to develop you know, custom infrastructure like an Amazon does. I'm going to look to Cisco and your R&D to do that. Do you, do you buy that? Absolutely. I think, again, it goes back, back to what, we, what I was talking about with platform. You got to give the world a, a, a solid, open, flexible platform. And flexible in terms of the technology, flexible in how they want to consume it. Some of our customers are fine with the SaaS, you know, software. But if I talk to you know, my friends in the in the federal team, no, that does not work. And so how they want to consume, they want to, you know, 100% air cap, you know, sovereignty we talked about. So I think, you know, the job for an infrastructure vendor like ourselves is, is to give the world an open platform, give them the knobs, give them the right API toolkit. Um, but the last thing I will mention is, you know, there is still a place for innovation in hardware. And I think some of my colleagues are going to get into some of those um, you know, details, whether it's on our X-Series, you know, platform or Hyperflex, um, but it's really, it's going to, it's going to be software defined. It's a SaaS service and then, you know, give the world an open rock solid platform. Got to run on something. All right. Thanks, Didi. Always a pleasure to have you on the, the Cube. Great to see you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. In a moment, I'll be back to dig into Hyperconverged and where Hyperflex fits and how it may even help with addressing some of the supply chain challenges that we're seeing in the market today. <laughs> 